the Jezebel spirit. Second time around, like I said, something happened to the first one, so I'm just gonna do it again. Um, one thing about the Jezebel spirit is it's one of the stronger spirits. It's one of the strongest, if not the strongest, spirit you could have. Other, right up there with Leviathan. And it's definitely more deceitful and more ruthless and more cunning than Leviathan. Leviathan's a blatant, it's when someone has blatant pride. Jezebel is like a sleeper. Jezebel will, will work in another person and bring all the demons out in, in, in you. Or it, the Jezebel doesn't do its own dirty work. The Jezebel tricks, tricks you into becoming evil, like it did to Ahab in the Bible. And uh, uh, another thing Jezebel does is it twists everything that you say, and it, and, it, and it turns things back on you. Like if you're a true man of God, the Jezebel will try and convince you you're of the devil. If you're in church and the, and the church is growing, the Jezebel will make two people not like each other through deceit. It'll whisper in one person's ear and say, you know, they, you could do a better job than them, or, or, or you should be the pastor, or something like that. Or you're better looking, they called you ugly. Anything it knows that, that it could get to you. Whatever you're, if you have vanity, it will use vanity against you. It's a master of using whatever your weakness is against you. And, uh, you know, it comes from the Queen Jezebel in the Bible that God talks about and God hates. And I want to read some verses out of the Bible right now. First off, I want to start off, I wrote a few verses down that I want to read to you guys. I want to start off with the verses that just describe and comment what the spirit of Jezebel or the demon of Jezebel that's possessing people today is, which is the same thing. What, what it's all about, what the Jezebel's characteristics are. And the first thing I'm going to read is 1 Kings 21-25. Okay? And I gave away my Bible, so I'm, I'm reading off the computer for now. 1 Kings 21-25. But there was no one like unto Ahab, which did sell himself for, to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel his wife stirred up. Okay. The reason it's worded like that, that, that Jezebel stirred him up, is because she provoked him and enticed him into, into destruction and sin against God. And that's exactly what the Jezebel spirit does. It tricks you and it causes fighting and it causes you and it uses lust and it uses witchcraft to pull this off. Witchcraft is any time you use a power to control somebody, be it sex, be it authority, be it uh, fear, Anything you use to wield over somebody else, to, to gain power over them, is witchcraft. And if you're of Jesus, you should not be using anything to get over on anybody else, okay? The next thing I want to read is 1 Kings 18.4. 1 Kings 18.4. For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah took a, took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them bread and water. Okay, so she's a prophet killer. If you're a true man of God, you have to watch out for Jezebel, basically. Because the Jezebel is the shrewdest, sharpest of the demons, and the Jezebel will try and snuff out a true prophet before it becomes a powerful man of God. And I've seen it. It's came at me. It's came at other people I know. And I've seen it operate in the churches like as clear as day it operates in the churches. Next line I'm going to read is 1813. One Kings again. 1813, One Kings says... 
Was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord, how I hid a hundred of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave and fed them bread and water? So this is the same thing, only this lets you know that she killed the prophets, okay? Same thing. I'm not going to comment on that. She actually killed God's prophets by, by, the, by the fifty. By the fifty. She, she gathered them all up and killed them. Okay, I want to read from Revelation 2.20. This is my favorite one. This is my favorite verse about Jezebel. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed to idols. Okay, so if you guys are getting fed in a dream, you should try and pray against Jezebel, the spirit of Jezebel, if you're getting fed by demons in a dream. Because that food that they're giving you was food offered to them by witches and warlocks, offered up to the idols. Okay, and, and that's what gave it a spiritual power when they made that offering. Okay, not only that, It indicates that she calls herself a prophetess. And I've seen this. I've seen this in, I, 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 I used to speak about a woman in my first few videos who spoke against TB Joshua. And I discerned the Jezebel before she ever even started speaking against TB Joshua. I discerned her Jezebel because she always talked over me. And she never listened, and she talked for hours and hours and hours. And when I tried to talk, she didn't accept my opinion. I would try to lead her to Scripture to show her kindly that the way she's behaving is not of God. She wouldn't yield. Jezebel, period. When I went and told my mother that I'm of Christ and, all the, and that I don't believe in what they're doing, she told me I was of the devil. She turned it back on me and that they were good and I was bad, that's a Jezebel. And I don't blame my mother, even though to this day she still doesn't understand that when I, when I, uh, when I get angry and I start to pray uh, at her, I'm praying at that Jezebel. So she just thinks I'm nuts because she doesn't believe that she could have a demon in her body. But when I see that Jezebel manifest, she gets so angry, she, she becomes not of herself, okay? Anyway, back to this woman, she would insult T.B. Joshua, the other woman. And it says here that Jezebel will discredit prophets and try and cut off prophets. So that's a good way that you could discern a Jezebel. Discernment is unction from God, people. But it's not always all unction from God. Some people get very uh, cocky and they want to pretend like God tells them things and that it's always perfect. And God, if you love Jesus Christ, he speaks to everybody the same. He has to see your effort that you are reading and understanding his word and his unction will follow. There's nothing wrong with talking to somebody to try and discern if they have a Jezebel, in my opinion. If you could talk to them about everything else, you shouldn't be all high and mighty like God just tells you exactly what demons are in them, and you don't have to talk to them. Yes, that's happened to me, but it's happened to me both ways where I hear nothing, and if I hear nothing, you better believe I'm going to be questioning that person what their past was like to try and find out what they got in them. Because there's nothing in the Bible that says we can't speak to somebody to try and find out what demons are in their body. The next one's 2 Kings 9.22 I want to read. And it came to pass when Jer Jerom saw Jehu that he said, and I, I'm not good with the pronunciation of these names, but... Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace? So long as the whoredoms of my mother Jezebel and her witchcraft are so many. So someone asked him, someone asked Jezebel's son, Are you at peace? And he was like, How could I be at peace with my mother performing witchcraft and, and her whoredoms and her, and her whoring herself and convincing other people to whore around? That's whoredoms. Using sexual witchcraft sexual power. 
and her son wasn't happy about it. He was embarrassed, he was at odds, he was miserable. Okay, that just lets you know her character. She's that woman that we all see on TV, that's on the soap operas, that, that, that cougar-like, that tears men up, that, that woman that, that uses her sex and her power and her lust to be a, a powerful businesswoman or something. That's Jezebel, wrapped up in a, on a silver platter for you. Now I'm going to read what our Lord has. I, I put a couple verses down of verses what our, our God, the Father Jehovah, has to say about Jezebel, the father of Jesus. 1 Kings 21.23 Kings 21.23 says, And of Jezebel also spake the Lord, saying, And of Jezebel also spake the Lord, saying, The dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. So the Lord has prophesied that Jezebel and all her, all her shenanigans and witchcraft, that she will come to a bitter end. That's what that means. And it means our Lord is not happy with her. And I believe she's the... Hello? This is him. That company's closed down, and I'm going to be... I don't have a minute, no. Bye. Sorry, guys. Um, I thought that was somebody that maybe needed help, but it wasn't. That's why I picked it up. Anyway, where was I? God's trying to say that uh, Jezebel's going to come to a bitter end, and that... That's his prophecy, and that he's done with her, her witchcraft, okay? The next one I want to read is 2 Kings 9-7. And thou shalt smite the house of Ahab thy master, that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord God, at the hand of Jezebel. Okay? So God's going to avenge his people. And that's a comforting thing if you're a prophet of God, that no matter if, if, if the enemy kills you, number one, that God will not let the enemy kill you before he's ready for you to come home. Number two, if the enemy does kill you, God will avenge your life and you will be glorified and the ones who killed you will be see hellfire for the rest of their eternity. Okay, that's, that's all that line's about. God's going to avenge us. 2 Kings 9.37 is the last one I want to read. And the carcass of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face of the field and the portion of Jezreel so that they shall not say this is Jezebel. Okay, this means he's going to grind up Jezebel to the point where she's unrecognizable. He's going to destroy her. She has angered him so much that he's going to mince her up and spread her out in the field like dung, like manure. Okay, and Jezebel, guys, is no doubt signifies the harlot of Revelation, the great harlot. So don't be drinking, don't be getting drunk on the wine of the harlot, okay? Don't be uh, wrapped up in lust and, and witchcraft and fornication and anything Jezebel is about. You don't want to be about that because God hates, hates, hates Jezebel. And, and the reason he hates her is because her witchcraft is the most powerful, that seduction, that sorcery, that that cunning, that turning things back on other people, that te trying to make you believe you don't have God, trying to make you believe that you need to, if you don't listen to her, there will be punishment. Okay? It's control witchcraft. Um, what else should I say about Jezebel? 
I know I got more. Jezebel's usually the strongest one in your body. Usually, not always, but usually. Sometimes a stronger demon will come along and there will be a strong man in there and the stronger one will just force that strong man to let them in and they'll come in. And they're not always the strong man. The strong man's the one that you've let divert your personality the most and it's been with you the longest and it's holding down your fort. Usually, like for me, pride was my, which is the worst sin. It's unfortunate that that was my sin, but God had a purpose for it. Pride was my sin, and I know that the Leviathan is probably my strongest demon. I'm 99% sure I've seen him in the spirit. I've seen the red dragon in the spirit, not in the physical, in its actual form, and it appeared as a Leviathan dragon. It was massive, and it struck at me in the spirit. When I saw it in the spirit, its head came down and slammed into me and I felt like I got knocked. The pain was unmistakable. I felt like I got knocked stupid. Okay. But Jezebel's the one that fooled Ahab. Jezebel's the one that you wives who are controlling your husbands and you wives who think that you wear the pants, you have a Jezebel and you're out of the line with the word of God. Okay. So you should not be trying to control your husband. If you use sex over your husband in any way, you're going to hell. If you don't yield to your husband, you're going to hell. You're not in line with God. Man is meant to be the leader in the house. And if you can't get on that bandwagon, you're not of Christ at all. Okay? I've spoken to to, to nice Christian woman who are doing everything right but they're but they're overpowering their husband in the house and they are they don't attempt to lift their husband up as a leader you're going to go to hell period it doesn't matter how much you love Jesus you're not listening to him you can't love Jesus listen you guys can't love Jesus and disobey his word he says that he said those who love me will follow my commandments he, that's out of his mouth. Okay? So anyone that I know that's ever told me that, that you have Jesus, if you're still fornicating, cursing, drugging, lying, now I'm not saying you can't slip out a lie and repent while you're breaking down your pride, because pride will make you lie, little white lies. Like, oh, I made this much money last week. I made, uh, you really made uh, 6000 but you said you made eight. You understand what I mean? And it didn't hurt anybody, but there's pride in it, and God hates that lie just as much as the lie that kills somebody. You guys get the point. You can't sin and, and really love Jesus. You can't be a Jezebel and go to heaven. You can't be a powerful woman in the workplace that's taking authority over men and go to heaven. Because even though it's a nice idea that a woman could be a leader in the workplace, and I believe a woman can be a leader by being a follower, because that's what God wanted. That's how you lead if you're a Christian woman. And I am not sexist, I am biblical. I am biblical because the Bible clearly states you are not to usurp authority over a man. You're not to. So if that woman that I used to preach with is that I used to go and preach with is watching this video, you are as of today, if you haven't taken yield of your Jezebel that I've stopped talking to you over, and I gave her chances, people, and I prayed on it, and God ripped me out of the situation. If she hasn't gotten it under control yet, she's going to go to hell. Doesn't matter, she could go preach fire in the subway. Unfortunately, that fire she's preaching is for her and not for Jesus if she has a Jezebel. And someone like me could stand next to her and preach fire, and I'm really preaching for Jesus and to please Jesus, and she's preaching for her own power in the body, for her own lustful, womanly power in the body. Okay, and I gave it much time, and you guys got to watch out for this stuff because the devil is roaming like a roaring lion, and if you don't have discernment, you're not of Christ. 
or you're not strong enough in Christ yet. I shouldn't say that. You could have Christ and not have discernment. I repent for saying that. But sometimes I get so fed up and I'm, and I'm around and my walk is, is heavy with Christ. It's heavy with Christ. So when I see this, I expect everyone's going to be on, on a heavy level of a walk and it just doesn't work out like that. In fact, I've only met, I can't even count five that I, that I would like to have in an inner circle if I started a church. But anyway, that's enough said on Jezebel. Oprah Winfrey's a Jezebel. Taking, taking all that power and authority and, and spreading junk and new age to the people. Anyway, that's enough on Jezebel. You guys get the hint. Be aware of her. Be blessed in Jesus Christ. Let's pray against her right now. Let's pray against Jezebel. She's, she's messing up the body too much to not intercede against her right now. Father God, in Jesus' name, this Jezebel is attempting to take down the church and to not let anybody congregate together. Father, right now in Jesus' name, speak flaming swords, speak chains, speak bonds, speak chains and fetters all over Jezebel. Lock her down. Let those chains be soaked in the blood of the Lamb, the one who died on the cross for us, that we may trample over the Jezebel. Let the chains be soaked in the blood of the Lamb, Father, in Jesus' name. I rebuke you, Jezebel, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anyone that's watching this video that has a Jezebel, I speak fire through this screen, right? I don't care if you're watching it a month from now. Fire through the screen all over your body, Jezebel. All over your body in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Lord, the Savior, and the Messiah. We cut you, we cut you multiple times and forever until you leave this body. We bind you and rebuke you, and we cast you out, we scatter you seven ways, like the Bible says. And I break the strongholds and footholds in Jesus' name. And I break the holds over the church that Jezebel holds in Jesus' name. Any time a Jezebel makes two people fight in a church, Father, or tries to divide the church, please loose your most powerful archangels on her to just sword her stupid, to just sword her into remission, cast her out into the pit, cast her out into the abyss, cast her into outer darkness, and this Jezebel demon, this androgynous demon, I command that in Jesus' name that it stays in cages. Anybody that hears this video, their Jezebel's caged, and I command that it's forced to come out into the light, that this video, when this person's done, if they pray along with me in this video, and they are amening and they are praising God at this video, that swords remain hanging over Jezebel's head, the swords are in the form of the Word of God, and that those swords hang there until the Jezebel comes out into the light, and when she comes out into the light and the person releases her, and the person fights their sin and fights their Jezebel, that those swords fall down on that Jezebel and destroy her in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Praise you, Father. May the Jezebel fall in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, guys. Pray against your Jezebels. It's, it, it's, it's, it's decimating the body right now. We're all still one body, but we need to recover and we need to tear the churches down without these Jezebels in there and without the Leviathan in there. All right? Be blessed. I'm glad the second Jezebel video is done because I bet it was Jezebel that messed up the first one. And praise God for putting the, for putting the, the unction and the zeal in me to just keep redoing these videos because I, I do them happily with his power behind me. And I thank him for that in Jesus' name. Amen.